Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own video game from zero to hero, which means I'm assuming you've never done this before, but don't worry, I'll show you everything you need to know to create this from start to finish. We're going to be doing this using a software called Game Maker Studio, and we're going to be doing this in just under five minutes and without writing any single line of code. If you're looking for a new skill to impress friends or you're looking to get into computer programming, this is definitely a good video for you to stick around for. In fact, I myself got started in my computer programming career about the age of 14 using this very software. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create the following game right here. I'm gonna put a link to Game Maker Studio and all the assets you need below the description of this video. All you need is the free version of the software to follow along. But before we get started with the tutorial, this tutorial is very, very special and dear to my heart because this is my very first tutorial as a dad of two beautiful daughters. Yes, literally two weeks ago while I was editing and filming this very tutorial, my wife broke the news to me that it's gonna be time for us to go to the hospital. And about a day later, our beautiful daughter was born. So this tutorial would always hold a special place in my heart because my daughter was born in the midst of filming and editing this tutorial. So let's make this one blow and go viral. Hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video for more people to watch and also when you finish watching this if you know someone that might benefit from this definitely share it with them so that we can make this video go viral for my daughter thank you very much now let's put five minutes on the clock and get started with the tutorial come on before we get started there are three things i'm going to mention a lot in this tutorial so let's explain them so you can understand what they mean the first is a sprite sprites are just all the visuals you use within your game so all your images this could be both static or animated images next we have something called an object and an object is where you put all your programmable logic into so if you're going to be programming anything in your game it's going to sit within your object by themselves objects are not visible to make them visible you'd have to attach a sprite to them and then they take the form of that sprite finally we have something called the room and the room is where your game comes to life this is where you build out everything that your player will end up seeing when they play your game so you put all your objects and your sprites within your room you can almost think about it like a powerpoint slide that is what a room is now that we have that cleared up let's get started with the tutorial to get started i'm going to click on new click on the drag and drop option and start a new project all right, so the first thing we want to do is import our sprite. So if you head over to the asset browser right here to the right and scroll down to the sprites folder and right click with your mouse and go to create, then you can select sprite. You can name your sprite anything you want, but it's advised to start with SPR just to denote that it's a sprite. I'll call mine player. And then right here, I can now go ahead and click on the import button to import my image. And for my player, I'm going to be using this cartoonized version of myself. If you want to know how to make one for yourself, I'm going to give you more information on that at the end of this video. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the exact same process to import the rest of the sprites for our game. All right, once you're done adding all your sprites, the next thing you want to do is add your objects to the game. And that's simple. Simply go back to your asset browser to the right and under the objects folder, click on create and select object. Just like your sprite, start with the word obj to denote that it's an object. I'll call mine player. And if I move to the left, you're gonna see your object editor. The first thing we wanna do is assign a sprite to it because we mentioned that objects are not visible by themselves. To do so, simply just click on the sprite, no sprite icon, and select the appropriate image that you want to show whenever this object is added to a room. All right, so far so good. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead to start programming our objects to add some life to our game. And to program objects, Game Maker uses something called events. Events are simply triggered whenever something occurs within your game. For example, when the keyboard or mouse is pressed and so on and so forth. To add an event, simply click on the add event button. It gives you several events. In my case, I want the player to react whenever any of the keyboard arrows are pressed. So I'm gonna to go to the key pressed event and there's an option here for arrow up. Next, we have something called actions. An action simply tells the object what to do whenever an event occurs. In our case, I want the player to start moving upward whenever the up arrow is pressed. So I'm going to search for an action called set direction. I'm going to drag that in and then I'm going to select the up direction. And then I'm going to also set a speed for it to move at whenever this button is pressed. So I'll drag that in and put a speed of four. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for the down arrow key, but this time around I'm going to set the down direction but also still set the speed of 4. 
and repeat the exact same step for both the left and right arrow keys. Next, I want this object to stop moving whenever the player lifts their hands off of any of the arrow keys. To do this, I'm going to add another event that says key up, which is triggered whenever a key is lifted up. And I'm going to select any for any of the keys and put set speed to zero as my action so that the player stops. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and add two more objects, one for the wall and one for the finish line, but I'm not going to add any actions or event in these for now. Alright, we're moving now to the final step which is creating rooms to make all of your games visible. To add a room, you simply go to the rooms folder and right click like we've done before to click on rooms. But the game always comes with at least one room, so I'm not going to create a new one. I'm just going to rename that room uh, to my main room and then open that up. By default, it comes with a black background. To change that, you simply just go to background and then right here at the bottom where it says no sprite like we've done with the objects, select whatever sprite you want to show as the background. I'm also going to click on stretch so that the background is filled in properly. To add an object to the room, simply go to your asset browser, click on the object and drag it and drop it in the room. That will create a new instance of that object. And if you hold Alt on the Windows or Command on the Mac, it actually allows you to duplicate that object. So I'm just going to hold the Alt key and continue to duplicate our wall right here to add it throughout the maze. And then I'm going to speed ramp all of this and go ahead and build the rest of the maze for this game. All right, that is looking pretty good to me. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drag my finish line object and just drop it right into the room. And you can always resize your object by just going to the edge of it and click and drag in. So I'll make this a little bit smaller. And finally, I'm going to add my player object. I'll just drag that and drop it in the room. So let's see what all of this looks like so far. To run your game, simply go right here to the top and click on the little play button and that's going to run your game. As you can see, if I press either of the arrow keys, the player moves in that direction. The only issue right now is that our player is moving right through the wall. So let's go ahead and fix that. All right, to fix this, I'm going to open our wall object. And then I'm going to check this option right here that says solid so that the game knows it's a solid object. Next, I'm going to open my player object and add another event, the collision event. So I'm going to say whenever it collides with the wall, I'm going to say set speed to zero so it stops moving. All right, so this should fix that issue. But before we run the game, I'm going to create one more room. I'm going to use this as my end screen. This is what happens when the game ends. And then I'm going to go back to the player object and add another collision event. This time around, I'm going to say whenever it collides with our finish object. And then I'm going to search for an action that says go to room. Then I'm going to select this option to select what room I want it to go to. And I'm going to select my end room right here. All right, so if you throw in a bit of sound design, your final product will look something like this. Congratulations, just like that you have your very first game made. Hopefully that was not too hard for you to follow along. But before we end the tutorial, I have a few more tips for you that might help you when you start exploring the software for yourself. So let's get to those tips. All right, so bonus tip number one is adding sound to your game. And this is super easy. You just go to the sound library right here and right click and click on create sound. I'm gonna call this background music to use for our background music. And then again to the left, you can go ahead and upload whatever sound you wanna use. You can play it, you can change the volume from here. And then the next step from that is to actually have it play in the game. And to do this, you'd have to trigger this from an object. So let's go to the player object and add a new event. I'm gonna add an event called a create event. So this is triggered whenever the player is created, which is normally at the beginning of the game. And then I'm gonna look for an action that says play sound. I'll drag that in and just select the sound that we've added just now and, and then make sure that it's looping so it plays throughout the game. And just like that, we have audio in our game. Bonus tip number two has to do with creating multiple levels in your game. This is quite simple. All you have to do is just create multiple rooms and design the levels in each of those rooms. And whenever a player finishes one room, you can use the go to room action like I did earlier on to move the player to the next level. It's that simple. All right, my final tip has to do with exporting your game. So let's say you're done testing and running this on your computer and you wanna share this with the rest of the world. It's easy to export. What you wanna do is head over to the top right here where you see the target sign. Click on that and you can select whatever platform you want to export this to, whether Windows, Mac, or even the web. If you're using the free version, you're not going to see this because this is a paid functionality. 
And one thing they don't tell you so clearly is that sometimes even after you've paid for this, this might still not show up. You have to log out of your account and log back in. I don't know why they don't make this very clear up front. It's kind of annoying, but yeah, that's something you might have to deal with. So once you've done that and selected the platform, all you simply do is just go right here where it says create executable to click on that. And then it's going to create the respective installable files for each of the platforms or HTML files if you're trying to export this for the web. And then you're ready to share this with the rest of the world. If you'd like to try it, a live demo of this particular game that we did today, a link to that is in the description. Click on that and you can test the game out for yourself. All right, that's all I had for you today. Hopefully that was not too hard for you to follow along. We started with a very simple game today, but you can use the same concept to create even more advanced games and even 3D games. In fact, in one of my upcoming tutorials, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create a skateboarding game using the same concepts that we have done here today. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure to turn on that notification bell so you're notified whenever that tutorial comes out and if you're looking to get into computer programming I do advise to continue with the drag and drop option it helps you understand some concepts of programming and once you've mastered that you can switch to game maker language where you can start writing some code and also move use that to then move to other languages like C++ and more advanced languages like that that is the same thing I did when I was getting into computer programming earlier on in my career and in case you were wondering how I got that cartoonized version of myself that is a Photoshop vector file it does take a little bit of mastering to do that but I have a tutorial and a Photoshop action that creates for your cartoonized version of your picture, uh, which anyone can follow along and, and use it. It's quite simple to use, but it's not gonna give you as good a result as what you saw there because it's an automated tool. I'll put a link to that tutorial and the action in the description below. And because this is a special video, I wanna do a giveaway to give two people a professionally done cartoonized version of your picture. So just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then let me know down below why I should give this to you. And I'm gonna be picking two people and giving this to you. Thank you for stopping by. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Make sure you keep learning. Bye-bye.